Philadelphia University Alumni Association and the members of the Alumni Association Board of Directors, I am delighted to welcome you to the 2010 St. Thomas of Villanova Alumni Medal Dinner. This year we honor Herb Asbury from the class of 1967. The St. Thomas of Villanova Alumni Medal, the highest honor bestowed by the Alumni Association, is awarded to the alumnus who best symbolizes the spirit and legacy of Thomas. Individuals who have achieved a level of distinction within their chosen fields or professions and who have brought extraordinary benefit to the university and to their communities. It is fitting that this year's St. Thomas of Villanova Alumni Medal is presented during the Leadership Summit as our honoree exemplifies those elements of leadership that are the hallmark of a Villanova education, truth, unity, and love. There are several members of the Board of Trustees with us tonight who I would like to recognize. Mr. Kimball Bird. Ms. Denise Devine. Dr. Nancy DiCiani. Father Mickey Genovese. Mr. Bill Gibson. Mr. Joe Topper. And our former alumni president and my good friend, Mr. Paul Tufano. I would also like to recognize the university administer administrators who are here this evening. Father Cal Ellis, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Mr. Mike O'Neill, Vice President for University Advancement. Mr. Ken Velosky, Vice President for Finance and Administration. Ms. Ann Diebold, Vice President for University Communications. The man in the middle of a lot of the blogs, Mr. Vince Nicastro, our athletic director. <laughs> Dr. Jack Duty, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Dr. Louise Fitzpatrick, Dean of the College of Nursing. and Dr. Gary Gabriel, Dean of the College of Engineering. I would also like to acknowledge the current and past members of the Alumni Association Board of Directors who are here this evening. Can you please stand? As we prepare to celebrate tonight's occasion and enjoy dinner together as a community, I would like to ask Katrina Urkel, the president-elect of the Alumni Association, to deliver the invocation. Katrina. Oh God creator of all that is and giver of life. You have blessed your people gathered here tonight in the goodness of creation 
and all that is offered. And you have revealed yourself to the world in the loving life of Jesus in the presence of your spirit. As we gather at this leadership summit, we are sustained by the nourishment both of food and fellowship. As we are strengthened by the spirit of this communal endeavor, so we are enriched by the wisdom of human experience and faith. In this changing world, we ask for the wisdom in setting our course, courage in sustaining our resolve, and faith to engage productively in a world torn by conflict, confusion, and violence. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit and in the great tradition and service of St. Thomas of Villanova. Amen. Thank you, Katrina. Please enjoy your meal. He has been extremely, extremely supportive of our association and our volunteer board. We are happy to be a part of Mike's team and look forward to continuing to work together for Villanova. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Mike O'Neill. Good evening, everyone. General Zinni, I know you're not a big fan of technology, but for those New Yorkers in the audience, the Yankees are up 4-2 in the bottom of the seventh. <laughs> That's what I was checking, Father Peter. Um, thank you, Bob, for that uh, kind introduction and for your energetic leadership as the uh, president of the Alumni Association Board. Uh, as Bob mentioned uh, in his opening remarks this evening, a number of you arrived on campus earlier today for our second annual Summit on Leadership. I hope you enjoyed the opening sessions and look forward to an equally illuminating day tomorrow. Certainly this summit could not have been kicked off in a more thought-provoking fashion thanks to the global leadership perspectives of retired U.S. Marine Corps General Anthony Zinni, Villanova's own from the class of 1965. General Zinni, we are proud to count you among our more than 105,000 alumni and are grateful for your service to our country and your dedication to Villanova. It's also fitting, as Bob mentioned, that the St. Thomas of Villanova Medal should be awarded in conjunction with this summit. For tonight and throughout yet, uh, today and, and throughout tomorrow, we find ourselves surrounded by leaders, 100 Villanovans who are noted experts in their chosen pursuits and who use their expertise to serve their professions, their community, and their alma mater. Our honoree this evening, Herb Asbury, embody those same characteristics and actions. As a former Alumni Association president, and in his current role as Chairman of the Board of Trustees, he continues to dutifully serve his university with active and involved leadership on behalf of Villanova. Having had the privilege to work with several board chairmen at various universities throughout my career, I can share with all of you that you will not find a trustee more committed, more loyal, and certainly more engaged in the life of a university. In thinking of my own interactions with Herb, Aside from the usual quarterly board meetings and conference calls, Herb has been a tireless advocate and supporter of the university, and personally, and in particular, to uh, uh, our efforts in university advancement. He and his wonderful wife, Vicki, have opened their homes, uh, often and generously, in Connecticut and Johns Island to host events and engage fellow alumni in the life and the future of Villanova. At the Big East Tournament, Herb is there. At the Final Four in Detroit, Herb was there. On the Friday before Christmas on a rainy Chattanooga night to watch the Wildcats lay claim to the national championship, Herb was there. Countless academic symposiums and panels, Herb was there. And my personal favorite, hosting me as I play very bad golf as his guest on courses I don't belong on, Herb was there. He's one of the few Villanova alums who've tendered a, a second invitation to play bad golf on courses I don't belong on. 
Um, as many of you know, Herb is nearing the end of his tenure with the Board of Trustees. But while that part of his Villanova chapter is coming to a close, it is clear that he has made an indelible mark on the university and its many accomplishments. And I know we are all grateful, Herb, uh, for you always being there for Villanova. So thank you and congratulations on this well-deserved honor. During his address earlier today, General Zinni was asked a question about the importance of today's students needing to master other languages in order to become global leaders. And while noting that the command of having the command of other languages is certainly an asset, the general spoke to a larger point of developing the ability to be fluent in culture, to speak culture, rather than merely having a basic understanding of other tongues in order to forge trust, ideas, alliances, and understanding with others. I'm not aware of anyone who speaks the culture of Villanova more eloquently than our next speaker, your president of Villanova University, Father Peter Donnie. Thank you. I actually thought when Bob was introducing all the administrators of the university that he left me out. I was like, uh, I guess I don't really count, but uh, Bob, where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. Well, that leads right into this. Um, I was, um, when I was asked to speak at this event tonight, I was given a script. And uh, normally, people at Villanova know that after the last four and a half years, I don't really follow the script. <laughs> normally, I, I kind of wing it and do what I want to do. But I was told by my assistants, you need to read the script. So you need to read what's in front of you. And it actually says that um, Bob Burns will remain on stage sitting in the background. So um, <laughs> that's what the script says. So I'm glad we're following the script. And I'm good for following scripts, you know. But I was uh, instructed that I needed to read this, um, and I'm going to add some comments at the end of it. But uh, it was a very lengthy introduction to Herb and to his work here at Villanova, and uh, I wouldn't have been able to memorize or remember all this. So Herb is the consummate leader volunteer, businessman, philanthropist, and champion for Villanova University. His thoughtful perspective, quality of character, business savvy, and passion for his beloved alma mater have contributed to many of the university's achievements in recent years. Herb enjoyed a long and successful career in banking following his graduation in 1967 with a degree in English from the degree in English, I want to underline that, degree in English from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. During his banking career, he led the North American Division of Manufacturers Hanover and would later serve as the Senior Managing Director of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East for Chase Manhattan Bank. A liberal arts student can succeed. <laughs> That's an editorial note in this script, okay? <laughs> his, pa his past director of the Royal Oak Foundation, this is another editorial, I'm from Royal Oak, Michigan, so I, I'm really glad that you're directing the foundation of my city. So it's, um, and the US arm of Britain's National Trust and served as its chairman from 2004 to 2007. Currently, he is a member of the board of directors of the Exide, I think it is, Technologies, as well as a member of its finance committee and head of its audit committee. Herb holds the position of adjunct professor at the Fisher Graduate School of International Business and Monetary Institute of International Studies. I did not know that you were a professor somewhere else. That was news to me. Big news to me. Herb has been a member of Villanova's Board of Trustees since 1999 and has served as Vice Chairman of the Finance and Audit Committee and has served as Chairman of the Board of Trustees since 2008. He was a member of the Steering Committee and Chair of the Major Gifts Committee for the Campaign for Villanova, the University's, the university's 300, the Campaign for Villanova, 
the university's $300 million capital campaign, which concluded in December of 2007. Herb also served as the Villanova University's Alumni Association Board of Directors for 10 years, including two years as its president. Herb and his fascinating, charming, lovely, better half, Vicki, who is here tonight, have endowed the university's scholarship and made a commitment to create an endowed fund to support the Villanova School of Business Center for Global Leadership. Arts and science, sir. <laughs> Arts and science. That's where you came from, you know? Like, let's remember where we came from. Anyway, Herb and Vicki's daughter Pamela and her husband Jeff are here tonight and are both Villanova graduates. Woo! Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go away from the script. I was at a breakfast this morning uh, with the college, uh, with Catholic colleges and university presidents at the Union League at 8 o'clock this morning, and I love breakfast meetings, so um, I'm real good at them. But uh, we were meeting with the new president of Manhattan College, um, a, a Christian Brothers school up in Manhattan, um, in the Bronx, actually, and he had once served at um, Fordham University. And he said to me, oh, I, I'm very happy to meet you. I, I recently had lunch with the chair of your board. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yes. And so I said, oh, that's nice. And he said, a friend of mine knew him and said, you might like to meet Herb Asbury. And I said, well, anybody would like to meet Herb Asbury. And he said, well, he certainly has read the manual. And he has certainly drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> because he is more Villanova than most people than I would ever meet in my life. And my, my response to him it was, no, Herb wrote the manual. <laughs> and Herb made the Kool-Aid. Uh, when I came in as president uh, in, uh, what was it, 2006 now? Um, Herb and Jack Drozdick was the chair at the time, and Herb was the, the vice chair at the time. And they welcomed me with open arms and have guided me and directed me and said, you need to do this, you need to do that. No, you don't need to go there, you don't need to do this. Um, and they were an incredible team in terms of leading me. And then the last two years that Herb has been the chair, um, I know I can always call him. He will always be there might be a little, a little raspy, but he'll always be there. Um, and he's an incredible guide and mentor, and Villanova is always at the center of everything he does and everything he says. Uh, this December, he will step down from the board, and Herb, as a personal note from me to you, I will miss you greatly. I will miss your guidance. I will miss your direction. I will miss... Um, your guiding hand in everything that Villanova has done. And you said to me, um, I don't want to go away. And I said, you're not going very far. So <laughs> I'll find something else for you to do. But on behalf of Villanova University, on its administration, its faculty, its staff, and most especially its students who have benefited from your constant vigilant guidance of this institution, we thank you and we honor you tonight with the Alumni Award. about the raspy voice. <laughs> I never know when I open my mouth that I'm going to sound like Bill Clinton or um, Maria Callas, because it's, it's all over the place, the whole range. And I've got, I've got a terrible cold right now, so I may run out of steam very quickly. <clears throat> Needless to say, I was very, very flattered and honored 
when Bob Burns called me at one point this summer and said that they would like me to consider, be considered for this award and accept this award. And of course, with my great confidence in myself, I immediately assumed that they must have tried a couple of other people. They had said no. <laughs> and uh, I, I see my classmate Bill Fallon here, as a matter of fact, who's another head of the Central Command. And a lot of other very, very capable people who are alums of Villanova University from all years. And uh, I can think of far better people to, to get this award, but again, I'm flattered and certainly accept it. I was thinking about um, how I would handle this and uh, thinking about Father Peter's background. By the way, um, we're going to, uh, actually, Vicki's going to do it. She's going to endow the new uh, Performing Arts Center, so don't worry about it. <laughs> It's a little scale model initially, but <laughs> we've got to work on the funding after that. But I was thinking about, you know, Father Peter, this is an award, and Father Peter, um, having won several Barrymore Awards for his great work in the theater department of Villanova, is probably used to this. And it's like the Emmys and the Oscars and all that sort of thing. So he would get up there and talk about all the things, you know, the, the, the cast, uh, the set designers, everybody behind the scenes. And I started thinking of that context, and I've got to think about few different people or organizations to thank uh, for the position that I'm in today and for uh, being so fortunate uh, to have gone to Villanova and to uh, have had a, a very exciting business career, and hopefully it continues to be. But <clears throat> in the most humblest form, again, as they would say in Hollywood at the Oscars, it's my parents. The one thing I regret is they named me Herbert, but I can't do anything about that. <laughs> and I've had to suffer through that all my life. But I thank them for having me. The second one was an institution, which um, is Holy Cross, College of the Holy Cross. I, I now am very grateful for them for not taking me off their wait list. Because <laughs> that's really where I was heading. I only had one school in mind, it was Holy Cross, and I was convinced I was going to go to Holy Cross and had the t-shirts and everything else. And uh, it wasn't to be, and I found out in August and I'd sent a deposit into Villanova, which I'd never seen. And uh, sure enough, I enrolled at Villanova. Of course, having accepted so late, that meant I was living in a rooming house in Bryn Mawr and hitchhiking up and down Lancaster Pike. But I still loved it at the time. So thank you, Holy Cross. And I guess the Jesuits knew what they were doing in that case. <laughs> finally, uh, not finally, but uh, I also want to thank Vicki for marrying me. And this is a long story. I'll make it very short. But we, uh, Vicki went to Rosemont, which is a college some of you may have heard of. Madonna, uh, Chris, you all know, that was, the, that was the Rosemont in those days. And there was a very close affiliation with, between the two schools because we weren't co-ed at that point. <clears throat> it was on a trip to Bermuda. A mutual friend of mine introduced me to Vicki who happened to be going to Rosemont. So it was very easy from that point on. We could go a quarter of a mile apart and date and the rest is history. He got married a few years later. So that was another great thing. I also thank Gary Olson for um, asking me to get involved in the Alumni Association, because really, I hadn't been that involved with Villanova. In fact, only when we restored football in 1985 did I start taking an active interest. Then I actually bought season tickets, which I've had ever since then, started coming down to the games, and um, became a big fan of not only the football team, particularly of Andy Talley, and have watched the games ever since. Uh, it was so bad when we were living in London that I found a number in Ohio that you could dial and get the live broadcast of the game. It cost a fortune on the phone. <laughs> and I'd listen to the games, and of course you had a five hour time difference too, which made it a little bit uncomfortable. And I'll never forget when we were playing William and Mary, we were undefeated season, Brian Finneran's year, and the game was a very important one. We were having dinner with some friends in London. So I had my cell phone, I was listening to it on the phone, you could set it up like a radio. I had my cell phone, I dialed in the cell phone, and I kept on stepping out of the restaurant. They thought I was going out for a cigarette, which I didn't smoke, and I finally came in and said, God, we won. And this was a guest, and I said, what was that all about? I had to explain it to him. But anyway, that was my involvement with Villanova. Gary, um, when we first moved to London in 1991, and my point of this is that you're never far away from Villanova people, no matter where you go. And in 1991, my daughter Pamela was starting her first year as a freshman at the American School in London, uh, not knowing anyone, the first day came back from school and said, I met a girl whose father went to Villanova, Chantal Laurie. 
when Don Laurier had graduated, I think in 1984. And Don was on the alumni board, so Don and I became good friends. He encouraged me to go on it. Uh, the sad commentary about Chantal is that she, go, she went to Georgetown. Uh, she couldn't get in here, so she went to Georgetown. But, <laughs> but Don introduced me to Gary. I got involved in the alumni board, so that was sort of the first drinking of the Kool-Aid. I didn't make it. I drank it. It's fascinating when I think back on the evolution just in that period of time, and this is probably about 1992, and what Villanova has become, and I always look at it in terms of what it was in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, et cetera, and there are certain generations, and you can't define them by specific years, but how we've evolved. And I look back at the 43 years since I graduated, and thinking back to the, my first job in New York, and uh, sitting in a conference room at Manufacturers Hanover, part of the management training program, a guy with an English degree from Villanova, and one of the people running the program was going around the room, there were probably 15 people in the room saying, now where did you go to college? And Williams, and we had a little anecdote about Williams, and somebody else went to Yale, and somebody else went to Brown, got to Villanova, said next. Literally, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't quite as, he didn't say next, but just moved to the next person, so. I kind of knew where I fit in this whole scheme of things, and it probably made me a little bit hungrier at that point. The irony of that is, is that 25 years later or so, all of a sudden some of these same people were asking me for recommendations for their children who wanted to go to Villanova. And that's, that's happening in, in, in great numbers these days. <clears throat> We've obviously come a long way in 43 years, but even more so in the last 10 or 15. And I sent something to Father Peter and to Ann Diebold Communications a couple weeks ago. And it's one of these things, you know you've arrived when certain things happen. And one of the great little subtleties right now is when the New York Times wedding pages, social pages, say somebody went to Villanova. Two years ago, five years ago, somebody went to Villanova University outside of Philadelphia, or even worse, in Philadelphia. It ain't where we are half the time. But these are subtle little things that uh, you know we've arrived. You know we've arrived when you look at the New York Times a couple of weeks ago, and I can't even remember what the event was, but it was an open university in New York with a whole group of very prominent universities, faculty members, and there was a Villanova faculty member in the middle of the program, alongside you know, Penn, Dartmouth, Harvard, et cetera. And that's a very significant event for us. I mean, it's happening behind us. You don't even notice it on a day-to-day -day basis. The, um, that's the other point about running into people uh, and meeting people from Villanova all around the world. I was walking, we were in London for the last couple of weeks and we were in Turkey and, and Germany. And I was going to try and get my laundry done in London and I walked by a particular restaurant and all of a sudden saw some woman waving to me. I was flattered at first. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was my dirty shirt she admired actually. But turned around and went in the restaurant and it was Lisa and Ken Velosky. And you know how big a city London is, and um, there they were just having been the same street. But this happens all the time as we travel around the world or travel locally. I keep on running into Villanovans in, in Connecticut and New Canaan where we live. And again, another sign that we've arrived, New Canaan was characterized, as many towns are, everybody tells you their whole life on the back of their car. You know, what political party they belong to, where they spend their summers, uh, whether their kids were honor students or weren't honor students. Um, <laughs> And more than you ever want to know. But then, of course, there's the, the college sticker. And in, in New Canaan and a lot of other towns, it was dominated by Williams, Harvard, Amherst, uh, on down the line. And I'd be willing to bet there are as many Villanova stickers prominent in the spade in the back of high-end SUVs in New Canaan, Connecticut today as there were any place else. 20 years ago, when I talked to people about Villanova, they'd say, that's in Philadelphia, isn't it? They play basketball, don't they? It's changed so much. And again, you don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis, but we really have arrived. And I could think about 50 different anecdotes, but you don't want to hear them. The biggest, one of the biggest challenges, I was, as Father Peter said, I was at one point the head of the Audit and Finance Committee on the University Board. And uh, having a finance background, that interested me a great deal. And a lot of the things we look at at virtually every board meeting, and certainly every Finance Committee meeting, is how well we're doing, and we're doing very well on all measures, uh, particularly in terms of operating margin against other schools. We measure ourselves against our peer schools. But the one element 
that always is our Achilles heel, is our endowment relative to everybody else. On the one hand, we have very strong bond ratings, very strong liquidity, very good operating income, a very, very strong fiscal discipline, which the Augustinians have shown for all the years the university's been in existence as a college. But the thing that we have to remember is that everybody else is moving ahead at the same time. So it's not just a question of, of, of trying to catch up. It's hard to catch up when your endowment is as small as ours is relative to the peers or the schools against whom we're competing. But nobody else is standing still. We have to keep on remembering that. And I guess this is a subtle or not so subtle plug for how important it is for all of us who are involved in the university, engaged in the university, and who are proud as Villanova alumni and alumnae to say we went to Villanova to be also a part of the support of the university in any way possible. Everybody has different uh, capabilities, but it's so important that all of us give back in some way or another. And I think everybody who's here wouldn't be here if you weren't, I realize that. But that's a message we have to impart across the community, our entire community and our friends. The, um, it's, 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 just, it's sort of a sad moment. I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago, about looking to my next, to my next to last board meeting is next week. And then the final one is actually going to be in New York. We're having a uh, board meeting in New York and inviting our other former uh, trustees to a reception as well. And that's going to be a very sad moment for me. I never thought I'd say that because I thought it was going to go on forever. Uh, 11 years has flown by. But the good news is, as Father Peter said, there are so many things that all of us can do for the university in any way you want to get involved. And I see myself, first of all, at every football game I can possibly attend, as well as the basketball games. I, the truth of the matter is, I love Villanova basketball, but my dog can't stand it. <laughs> every time I watch a game, the poor dog you know, is cowering under the table because I'm pounding the floor or something like this. So for her sake, I don't watch that many games. <laughs> Actually, what I, got, what I started doing in the last two years with a DVR was taping them, finding out what the score was and see if it was safe to watch it. <laughs> and then the dog was safe as well. But football for me is a different matter, and I really enjoy uh, yeah, and I'll continue to do that. But again, this has been an incredible adventure, you know, starting with working with Gary Olson, the Alumni Association, uh, go back a step, 1967, and I said this when I became chairman, uh, I was um, about 40 pounds heavier than I am right now, and I graduated barely by the skin of my teeth. And I said at the, when I was named chairman that I waddled across the stage. Well, the truth is, I wasn't on the stage because I missed the, we, we got lost on the way to convention hall, so I sat in the uh, bleachers up there with my cap and gown, watched everybody else graduate. I did graduate, I got the degree. <laughs> A little bit of a lie about that, but in my wildest dreams at that point in time, I never thought I would be standing in this position as chairman of the board of Villanova University, for which I'm very, very proud. I'm very proud that I had two of my children. I couldn't convince two of the others to go here, but uh, one of my children and my, and my son-in-law, Jeff, as graduates, I'm very happy to say that, um, that Henry J. Byrne and Ellie Byrne will be in the class of 19... 2029 and 2030. It's a done deal. <laughs> At least it's paid for. <laughs> but again, thank you everybody for being here. It's great to catch up with a lot of old friends and former board members. Some people, Tim Monahan, for example, and Jonathan Doe from the faculty with whom I've worked in the past. Father Deegan, who had to interview me in the beginning of the process when I was going on the board. Then, you know, break the pencil, yes or no, either way. But probably one final thought, probably the most exciting moment, and I'd say this whether he was here or not, was leading the search committee to find a new president when Father Dobbin announced, probably a year earlier than we'd expected he was gonna leave. Jack Drozdick called and asked if I would head the search committee. And we did it, we had some outstanding candidates, and we got Father Peter out of the mix. And I can't tell you what he has done for this university, Father Dobbin, did a wonderful job taking it to a point. Father Peter was exactly the right person at the right time. And I think the most telling thing is when the proverbial white smoke went up the chimney and it was announced that we had elected a new president, uh, the response 
from the entire university community, administration, faculty, alumni, students, was overwhelmingly positive. And more importantly, it continues to be. And he really has done such an exceptional job. Uh, the vision of coming in, and, and Father Peter told me a story about going to a program at Harvard after he became uh, president. It was a program for new, new presidents. And one of the first lines was, you were the head of the drama department and now you're president? <laughs> and I suspect a few other people probably said that, at least, you know, under their breath. But he's had the vision, the leadership, what he's done in terms of the cap campus master plan that we're working on, in terms of uh, the strategic plan we're working on. A lot of decisions he's made along the way show that we have not only a brilliant man, but a brilliant leader and a brilliant president. And I'm very, very happy to have been part of that uh, equation along the way. Thank you very much. I really, again, I, I'm flattered. I still think you made a mistake, but I'll accept it. I'll accept it very gratefully. Thank you.